It's March 27th, 2019. I'm your host, Stephen Vanover, here on the Sports Talk Line Network, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. It's time to put your NFL draft cap on. We have with us here tonight, Sports Talk Line senior NFL draft analyst and man who looks like he picked the wrong week to give up sniffing glue, Connor Livesey. Welcome to the show, Connor. What's going on, man? How are you? All right, man. Doing well, doing well. It's uh, another week, uh, another four guys we're going to take a look at here, take an up-close look. And the first uh, guy is a, a guy that you and I both like, and all he needed to do was come out and do well at his pro day, which is almost like a gimme. And for defensive tackle Jalen Ferguson out of Louisiana Tech, it didn't quite work out that way, did it? No, and you, you know, you said defensive tackle. He's a defensive end that tested oh, like bad. a defensive tackle. Um, after looking at his pro day, you probably assume he was a, a 320 pound defensive tackle. But yeah. <laughs> he, he, he came in, you know, at 6'5, 271, and the numbers were very, very bad. Uh, 482, 40 yard dash, and 808 three cone drill, which is historically bad. Uh, the 512 short shuttle, which is also historically bad. I mean, you just really couldn't have asked for a worse performance at a pro day. Um, But again, you you, you turn on the tape and there's a lot to like. He leads, uh, he's the college football sack leader um, of all time. So he's the most productive edge rusher in forms of production, uh, in in form of statistics of all time. So there's still a lot to like with Jalen Ferguson. He's a guy who can play outside. Uh, You can put him in on some some money packages, some nickel packages where he can rush from the three technique you know, standing up as a as a Russian shade kind of uh, interior rusher. Um, but he's a guy who, com- who converts his speed to power. That's how he wins. He uses his length, he uses his, his power, his strength to win. So he doesn't need that athleticism to really bend and t- torque and flexibility. He well, just when you, right after these guys. When you look at film on this guy, Connor, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, his numbers that he had, I, I, I swear you just take that pro day and throw it out. Maybe he didn't eat enough Oreos because I'm looking at a guy here and here's a guy who can make quick moves, who who can transition, as you called it, the speed to strength. So I don't know about those pro day numbers. Some people don't test well. That guy can play football. Yeah, I mean, I, that's where I'm at with him. I mean, again, the fact that they were literally the worst numbers you could possibly ever put up for the position is obviously concerning. But you just see here a guy who can use his length. He can convert that speed, his snap quickness to power. He uses good leverage. He uses his hands well. Um, and that's how he wins. You know, he, he's got a little spin move that he likes to use to to come on a counter when he does rush up a little high because he doesn't have right. that bend, that flexibility. The three cone, you know, shows that. But he's a guy that, like I said, he uses his hands. He uses his length. He uses the power to win. And, and we got a clip here, or like I was mentioning, that speed move where he's able to go work up the field. This is actually another clip of him uh, just winning with the speed to power, just pushing a guy over with his, his violent hands, his power in his upper body, his ability to convert that speed to power. Um, well, those are <laughs> things that you do to win in the NFL. He just well, you know, have it makes me wonder up. too, conversely, how do you want to be an offensive tackle on tape that just got beat by this guy who just put up historically bad numbers in the combat? Well, you know, what are you going to tell him? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, playing at Louisiana Tech, they're not playing the, you know, greatest offense alignment. You know, not a, right. not a, they're not SEC offense alignment, but they're still playing quality guys. You know, I, I liked his Mississippi State film. They have some good offense alignment at Mississippi State. So he beat some really good players at Louisiana Tech, but he's going to have to be a better, you know, athlete to, to be able to, uh, you know, copy that production in the NFL. He's a guy that... You know, he, that for, instance, for instance, at the pro day, he ran that three cone drill seven times and slipped like five out of the seven times oh, and man. then put up the, the 803 three cone, you know, official. So it's like, you aren't flexible, that shows up on tape, but you have to be able to do something other than run a bull rush because he can play football. He yeah. can play football. All right, well, look, uh, let's flip to the other side of the ball where there's another guy that, you know, it's different positions, same story. A guy that is a football player, a talented football player, in this case, a running back. I think it's a three down running back. You're not taking this guy off the field, but man, uh, his numbers that are being tested, they've not helped him, have they? No, and you know, Joshua Jacobs, the Alabama running back, he's one that didn't fall. Jalen Ferguson fell for me quite a bit because of how bad the numbers were. Joshua Jacobs, I'm trusting the tape on a little bit more because it's a running back position. Um, you know, you, you see guys on tape with good vision. You see guys on tape with 
with good speed, they might not have that 40 yard dash long speed or the explosiveness that you'd like to see, but he has really good vision. Uh, I think he has really good change of direction. So he's able to create holes for himself that aren't there. Um, and, and again, he's one of the best receivers in this class out of the backfield. So Joshua Jacobs fell a little bit for me, but it wasn't as much as Jalen Ferguson. Uh, we have some clips of him running the football and you just see there's so much power, so much violence in the way he runs. Here's one of his field vision, not much there changes directions, makes a guy miss, makes another guy miss, touchdown. You know, that's something that I don't care how fast you run. If you have the vision, you have the athletic ability to change directions, to shed that that tackler, and then make another guy miss for the touchdown. You know, that that's just things you love to see. He's got really good size. And then again, I think his receiving abilities out of the backfield are going to make him one of the best, one of the top running backs drafted. Here's another. I mean, again, you wouldn't think that this guy's a 4'6 athlete with the way he's able to burst, explode off his back foot and get downfield. But he was a 4'6'6", 40-yard uh, dash runner at his pro day. You know, that's uh, you know, some guys I talk with, we call that Emmett Smith speed because he uses his vision to make himself look fast. Yeah, and, and you know, that's something, like I said, his vision and then his change of direction. You know, he I don't see where he ran a three cone. I'd love to see that because he's a guy who, you know, he'll stop on a dime and cut left, cut right, make him miss, and he's gone. You know, making, like you right. said, using the vision, using that change of direction to create his own holes makes his running game, running his running style, I should say, a lot better than some of these guys who might be 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four athletes, but they have no vision. They have no change of direction skills. They're yeah, they run into a wall runners. at a really high rate of speed, but they're still running into the wall. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing. Uh, you, know, you, but, you see guys you know, like Kareem Hunt that come out, you know, obviously off the field issues are terrible. You know, I'm not comparing him to him off the field, but a guy who didn't test extremely well, but he came into the league and he was able to find success because he had good vision. He was able to break tackles, catches right. the ball. Those are things you see in a guy like Josh. Also, because he's the new sexy, running backs that can catch the ball. And that's what this guy can do. So. Yep. You know, yep, not all, you know, there's there's so many running backs nowadays, the Tariq Cohens, you know, that, that run these four threes, four twos, but there's still a ton of good running backs that are still four, five, four, six guys who just the vision, the power, you know, the receiving ability makes up for the, the lack of straight line speed. Well, there's plenty of teams out there that need them, but there's also plenty of teams out there that need a safety. It's like the new bargain position in the NFL. Guys are going out there either getting a ton of money or nothing. Uh, it, it's a real strange position, and that's because there's two different types of safeties, man. There's the uh, the in the box safety, and then there's the ball hawk safety. Uh, we're talking about Taylor Rapp, uh, safety out of Washington, a guy I like a lot. Uh, I like his range. I like his uh, his ability to track the football. But why don't you describe to us, you know, the difference between what he did in his freshman year, what he's done since then, and where you think he's going to end up. Yeah, you know, he's a guy that in coverage, he, he's a little passive, I'll say. That's a word I like to use when describing some of these nickel guys, these safeties who they don't really trust what they see at all times when they're in coverage. And it's just from an uncomfortable aspect. But you see a clip here of a guy that, that does have the range, the athletic ability to make plays on the football. He didn't do it a ton at Washington. Uh, he started off his, his career there, you know, taking the football away. And then that kind of do dove off in his, his later years there. But uh, Taylor Rapp's a guy, I mean, I think you're going to put in a box. You're going to line him up um, in the nickel. You know, he can cover some tight ends out of the, you know, out of the slot. He can cover running backs. But he's a guy I think you're going to put in the box and let him make his make his money as a run defender. Uh, a guy who can blitz, as you see here in this clip, a guy who can get in the backfield, bring the quarterback down. But as I said, a guy who can move sideline to sideline with great range, sideline to sideline range to make plays against the running game. Uh, a, a guy that, you know, I'm not going to compare him to Landon Collins, but similar style of players. The guys you're going to play down in the box, uh, you're going to let him, you know, move laterally you're going to let him move vertically in the backfield to make plays in the backfield around the line of scrimmage and he's going to make a career a long career doing things like that you know i, I like what you're saying it, it's consistent with your description because that's landon collins he has range to get sideline to sideline mm -hmm. but he's not going to really cover well and you know he, he can hang with most tight ends but that's about it that, that's not his thing mm -hmm. but he does have a sense for the ball he's always around it he, you know he does have that instinct for the ball that, you know, if, if he ends up being like that, that's a pretty good draft pick. I uh, spent a lot of go, time again watching him, and he's moving up the board considerably. So we'll what have a round? new. What round do you think he's looking at? 
I got him as a, as a, a high end uh, second round, so a top end second round pick nice. now. Uh, again, he was a 62 rank, so he was a, you know, third, pretty much an early third. Now he's moved up almost a whole round after a full weekend of watching him. Um, and, and, you know, kind of just re reevaluating some of the tape I watched and then getting some new tape in that I didn't have beforehand. I, I really like his his development throughout his year years at Washington. And then, like I said, just being able to put a guy like that in the box and really take away uh, running backs. You know, you, you see the these teams nowadays that they don't want to put nine, ten in the box, but they bring that one safety down. They have seven, eight in the box, and he does the job of, you know, an extra linebacker. So. Right. That's what I like to see. Well, with he, he's smiling pretty big there because he's thinking about how much money he's making as he's crawling up your board. I think you know. Uh, that's right, that's <laughs> def definitely looking that way. You know, I think I think NFL's teams are really liking him. I think he's going to go a lot higher than some people expect. Well, we got another guy here that we're going to flip back to the offensive side of the ball for our last guy we're going to talk about today, wide receiver. We're talking Kelvin Harmon out of North Carolina State, giving our North Carolina boys some home some home love. Um, this guy's exciting, man. He's, uh, he can run more than one route. He's got some nice hands, but, uh, I don't know. Tell me about him. This is an interesting wide receiver class. And this is an interesting wide receiver. As you mentioned, this wide receiver class is very interesting. Um, I don't think anyone would feel comfortable betting, you know, much money on, on who's going to go first out of these guys. But it wouldn't surprise me one bit if it's Kelvin Harmon. Uh, with his size, uh, you know, a guy who's who's six foot two, 220 pounds, uh, ran a 4'6 at the combine, you know, jumped pretty well. His short shuttles were okay. So he's a guy who moves well for his size he has a pretty developed route tree for his size as well um he's a red zone target as we have a clip here of him uh you know selling the the inside move with his head his eyes and then just selling the fade and then going up and just boxing out the the uh you know good ball by the way from 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 ryan finley yeah, it was. The, um you know the, the the nc state quarterback but a guy who's going to be a very very productive red zone guy because of his size his ability to go up and get the ball um but a guy who i think can make a difference in between the 20s as well with his route running ability uh, i think we have a clip of him running like a, a a deep post almost um just going getting the ball breaking a tackle and then he's you know it's off to the races a guy who like i said doesn't have that blazing blazing speed but he's an athlete. You know, he could run routes. He's nuanced in his route running ability. He sells routes, um, you know, pre-routes before he does make his initial, his break on his balls. He comes in and out of his breaks really well. He sinks his hips well to get in and out of his breaks. So for his size, I think he's a really good athlete for the position. Is he as physical as like, let's say, a Des Bryant type player or not quite? I don't think he's quite that physical. You know, Des Bryant coming out of Oklahoma State was a physical freak, a guy who you just yeah. you knew when the ball was up in the air he was going to win. I don't put him on that level, but he's got the potential to be. You know, I'll say, you know, a guy who's still kind of building his body uh, at 221 pounds. I think he's learning how to use his frame to, to box out, to go up and get that football when it is in the air. He's a little passive in that regard, you know, using that word again that I like to use. But, man, I think he's a guy you're going to get in here uh, you, you're going to teach him how to run a few more routes. You're going to, you know, you know, get him a little bit faster, a little bit twitched up in his lower half. And you're looking at a guy who I think, you know, is going to turn into an instant impact on red zone plays um, in the red zone. But then a guy who I think in a few years you'll see him making plays in between the 20s, a consistent five, six, seven catch a game for 60, 70, 80 yards. I think that's going to be his, his money. It's a guy that I hope makes it nowhere near the New York Giants. But but what round do you think he's going to go in? I mean, again, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes, you know, in that 20 to, you know, back end of the first round. I think a back end of the first round, super, super early second round. Um, wow. I don't see him being around, you know, after, you know, pick 35, 36. It's so hard to, to predict the wide receiver class this year as to how they're going to start tricking yeah. off. Because yeah. I, I really think it has more to do with the needs everywhere else because the wide receivers aren't testing that well, but everybody that I, that I hear talk about, you know, at first it was like, oh, well, it's not much of a wide receiver class. But then after a while, everybody was echoing what you said very early, that down the road, this wide receiver class could turn out to be pretty nasty, right? Yeah, and it's just at the top, man. You, you, you know, you got, there's no top, you know, DK Metcalf's probably the top receiver for most guys. Um, and, and he's got some questions regarding his game. You know, he doesn't have a developed route tree. Uh, he has some injury issues. Then you got guys like Marquise Brown, who would, you know, be a top option, but he's 
very undersized. Uh, and he also has some injury issues. So there's no guy that just, you know, has a developer. There's no Odell Beckham in this class, a guy who's got size, he's got the hands, he's got the route tree, he's got the athleticism. So all these guys are just, you see so many of these guys on my board when it, when it is officially out, when it is finalized, you're going to have so many receivers that I have ranked, you know, from 28 to 55. You know, I'm going to have like 10, 12 receivers in that range. Um, and I think the second round is just going to be the money round for these receivers because there's no top end guys. So, and, and but, seriously, you could put them in a bag and shake them and put them out in any order would probably be okay. I was just going to say, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if not a single receiver goes in the first round. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit if six receivers go in the first round just because of how close a lot of these guys are. So just depends on how they start falling at the top. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a fun position. It's a hard position. Uh, you know, w w when you look at a guy like, you know, like an Odell Beckham who, who has everything when he comes out. And then you look at, you know, what you have right here, and that's just not the case. But when I look at the wide receiver class, the way that I like to put at it, there is blue chip potential, but there's no blue chip talent right now. Yeah, I mean, DK Metcalf's that blue chip potential, but yeah, yeah. Co coming in this draft, you know, he's not a guy that... No production, no blue chip production out there, is there? No, no, you know, I, I had Calvin Ridley as a, as a blue chip player coming out last year, which was kind of a hot take to a lot of people because he didn't test like a great athlete. And I think you saw last year for the Falcons is... He wasn't quite the blue chip right away player. I think he had like eight touchdowns, which is really, really good for a rookie receiver. Oh, yeah. But you, you saw it with him. You saw a guy who could run routes. He could get open. With not could... the best or most polished QB throwing him the ball. You might want to point that out as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, nothing against Trubisky, but hey, you know. Well, that, that was Miller, so so Ridley was with the, the Falcons. Oh, yeah, 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 Atlanta. You're right, you're right. No, right back. Which, which, you know, Matt Ryan's a solid quarterback, and I think that had a lot to do with his instant production um, coming in. But, you know, like I said, like you said, you know, no blue chip talent, but blue chip potential. I think that's a really good way to describe this receiver class. you got four or five guys with a lot of blue chip potential, but it's just not there yet. No, no. Well, it's going to be exciting, man. Thanks so much for the update. Uh, as we sign off real quick, why don't you tell everybody before we sign off, rather, about how they can find you on social media and about what you're going to be uh, writing here and uh, as we come to the NFL Draft, because it is exciting times. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Connor NFL Draft. The draft is less than a month away, so the content's going to be coming out. We got mock drafts. Um, my finalized big board's probably be going to be coming out early next week uh, as some of these last pro days are getting in. You know, it might change a little bit. Um, but positional rankings, big boards, mock drafts, uh, you know, maybe a few more player profiles. Um, but, man, we're, we're really excited. Like I said, less than a month away before the draft's here. Um, can't wait for it. You know, a lot, lot of talented players, defensive players, you know, preferably. I'll say, you know, at the top end of this draft, we're going to make this draft class <laughs> a lot of fun to look at. And I uh, can't wait to see how it falls. Oh, man, it's always exciting as can be. Thank you so much, Connor. Hey, everybody listening out there, uh, also, the NFL draft's coming up. He mentioned mock drafts. You can go to fanspeak.com. Be sure and pick the sports talk line. That's the draft board by Connor Livesey up there. You can pick that and get an in-depth uh, look and see how Connor Livesey has things uh, projected and get a feel for that. And, of course, that'll be updated here when he puts out his new list. On social media, you guys know the drill. Retweet, like, uh, all those kinds of things. And uh, don't forget on YouTube to get that subscribe and notify. We certainly appreciate it. For everyone taking time out of your day, thank you so much. Until next time, listen, like, and play with intensity.